We got yeah. one more week next week. How many of y'all had? Y'all y'all been busy with busy with camps all summer? Yeah, four four weeks of day camp. We had four days of team camp. At uh, like a two day skills camp, and then a father son camp. So we get after it. Wow, uh, a father son though. camp. Yeah, it's That's pretty cool. Probably my favorite camp. We have it. Uh, so it's Friday Saturday. They get here like at five, register. We do like a night session, stay the night in the dorms, and then do like a morning session and have like uh, two classroom sessions with the dads and just kind of talk about parenting and stuff. Yeah. So it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So did you start that when you came to Bethel? It was already going. So we just kind of, we kept it going. That's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. You I actually think. told me about that. Uh, I think one time when we were on the phone. Yeah. Um, so no, you guys been well, what's summer going well for you guys? Keeping busy? Yeah, I'm I'm chilling right now, kind of, and I'm I'm in between. You know, I'm in between things, um, but I'm okay. I'm chilling a little bit right now. You know, I'm going to Pikeville. Okay. And then uh, I'm trying did not to, hear that. Yeah, I took a GA spot at uh, at Pikeville, and then Nate okay. Nathan uh, Nathan a different location I, too. I think I I texted you, Nate. Right? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yes, sir, you did. Official yeah, congrats, up in your neck official congrats to you now. Yeah. That's yeah, like in person. That's awesome. I think I'm only like three or four hours from you. I don't think I'm very okay. far. Come on. That's not far. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Coach, I was looking. I cannot find I cannot find any I, I, like any pictures of you in the tube socks at Belmont. What's going on? Really? No, I can't. I typed in Steve Draven, Belmont basketball, Steve Draven, tube socks. I typed in no. I cannot. There's one like of you that you're in, but it's not like literally of you. But I know there's some out there. I'm trying to find some. I, you want me to go get them real quick? If you could send me some, that I'm honestly, I'm probably going to use it uh, for I mean, like, the cover. Literally, go get the tube socks, and I can show you. Please, please go get the tube socks. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be right back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, this might have to be the trailer. <laughs> I thought he meant the picture. <laughs> no, he's going to go get the tube socks. <laughs> oh, I hope they've been washed. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think, you don't think they, he washed them in between games? No, I think he did. I think he did. I think um, after his last game, he was like, I'm never watching. He was like, I'm never watching. <laughs> They're just stale. They have this, like, same foot imprint. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this is like – I love – I hope they got, like, some, you know, like, remember, like, in the 70s, they had, like, the rings around them up top? Or I, Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love them. Uh, this is great. When we you know Coach Draven didn't play in the 70s, right? Yeah, I know Coach Draven did, but I'm saying I hope <laughs> he wears those kind of type of socks that he brings out. That is hilarious. I love when we have – I love when surprises like this happen. Why did someone just text me, are you missing a dog? We believe we have it. <laughs> yeah, how to show them here. <laughs> Still got them. I probably have Dude. about five or six pairs. Now, are those old? You wear them for pickup? So, I've got some new socks that I wear, but I, I still have about five or six of the pairs that I wore. Hey, that's great. Hey, let me check one second and make sure my dog is here. <laughs> So hang on, those those are new ones, right? Like are those from the Belmont days? These, these actually are from the Belmont days. No way. Yeah. <laughs> you kept them. Yeah, I got about five or yeah, five or six from the Belmont days. Oh my goodness. They're pretty well. You know, I used to wear I always wore two pair of socks, so they didn't go too bad. Yeah. 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 Kept, kept in pretty good shape. But yeah, I always did the two. I was I was a huge fan of the two socks. I was a huge yeah. fan of the two socks. You know, I had the two socks, I had the ankle braces, like the thick ones. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, it didn't matter. I didn't. I couldn't run or jump very well. Yeah, so yeah. it didn't affect me too bad. <laughs> Man, but, that's funny. Um, yo, I mean, how's, how's how's it been since you've been up there? I mean, I, know, I we haven't got to talk a ton, but just how's it been? Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's 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 good being back in Northern Indiana, right. you know, where I grew up. And my parents relocated to Indianapolis, so they're closer, but my hometown's about fifty minutes away. Okay. Um, they're about two and a half. Uh, Brittany's, my wife's family's four hours. Okay. So it's good to get to see them more. But okay. people are good here. The um, just having some familiarity. You know, I yep. hang out with some. You know, Otis, Nick Otis. He's up there. You, you remember Nick? He's yeah, I remember Laporte. Nick. Yeah, he's a lawyer in Laporte. Okay. So he comes to games. Um, you know, so we get over to Laporte, and then. Um, but Bethel's been great. People are good. You know, the conference is really good league and um, it challenges us a ton and yeah. as coaches and players. And so it's been good. I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep, my dog was definitely gone. 
Okay. <laughs> How'd that happen? Door open? Left the door open? My wife went out on a walk and then did not, um, I guess, did not keep the dog in the house or take the dog with her. So, okay. Dog ran away, and then I got a text from a random number that said, I think I have your dog. I was like, okay. Well, huh. I'm glad we got her number on the collar or our numbers on the collar. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I got to see the tube socks before all that happened. That is hilarious. Yo, Nate, you guys are, want to see him, you just, you know, FaceTime me. <laughs> the, hey, those are the ones from Belmont. Those are from the Belmont days. Yeah. How have they not ripped? I, I, well, I haven't worn them since. So I, I keep about five or six pairs. God, just, just, for, just for moments for like this. For time's sake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, how many, so how many tube socks did you go through during your career? That's a good question. You know, it was interesting because I had, you know, because I, I started doing it my sophomore year in high school. and. You know, it, growing up in Indiana, you know, LaPorte being a one high school town and people caring about basketball, like we had great fans. Like we'd have three to 4,000 people at our home games. Holy cow. And so when I started doing that my sophomore year, um, you know, these little old ladies, they, they'd buy me tube socks, <laughs> um, you know, for like Christmas or, you know. Hey, I noticed, Steve, you got a hole in one of your tube socks, you know. <laughs> I, I got you a, a brand new, you know six pack of tube socks. So I, I got quite a few. So I, I went through them, you know, through high school and college. That's yeah. phenomenal. The last oh. five or six pair that I finished with at Belmont, I just kept them, you know, kind of for old time's sake. I always got them. Oh. That's awesome. Well, well, seriously, did, I mean, whenever you still play, cause I know you still are out there playing. I'm sure you are. Are, yes. uh, are you wearing the tube socks these days? Not, not every time. Okay. Every now and then I will. If I'm playing with any, you know, former college players, which I haven't in a while, I yeah. definitely would. <laughs> oh my gosh that's oh well, hang on i didn't even get to introduce nashville, I did for sure what'd you say coach back in nashville when i was playing i uh, i did for sure yeah you were so I remember, I remember seeing you hooping in a little bit coach i didn't get to introduce you real quick we got coach steve draven on the show with us today uh laporte indiana native indiana native he is the head basketball coach at uh, the bethel university pilots uh former belmont basketball player uh coach appreciate it man been a long time coming glad we finally got you on uh, how you doing, man? How you doing? How's that thing going? Doing great. Great to be on the show with you guys, man. You guys were two of my favorites. So that was fortunate to coach, and I really enjoyed both you guys. Um, well, going forward, you're definitely yeah, more than welcome to tell the truth. Um, <laughs> but but we are super excited to have you on. It's been long overdue. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you guys had some some nice uh, guests on your show. We have. We, we've been lucky. We, we've had some. We've had some really good people. We've had some really good. Everybody's been phenomenal. They, every, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, well, all right. So you got your. You know, you were hired in uh, 2019, right, at Bethel? Correct. What's What's it been like? You know, first time head coach at the college level. What's What's that been like for you? Yeah. Been, so been here three years now. Um, you know, when I you know probably the last th two or three years at, at Lipscomb when I was there as an assistant, kind of got the college bug and. Um, and I always kind of had my eye on this league, um, you know, the Crossroads League. It's, in my opinion, one of the best two leagues, probably Crossroads League in the Mid-South, um, which down closer to your neck of the woods there. and um, Just high-level basketball. Honestly, it's better than I even thought it was. Really? Mm -hmm. um, just from an offensive skill standpoint. Um, the, the, the offensive skill is probably very similar to the A-Sun. You know, what's different about the A-Sun is that just a little bit bigger, faster, stronger athlete. That's really the only difference. And then the coaching is, you know, just as good. Um, and so it's a challenge each and every night. And, uh, but I love it. It makes me better as a coach. You know, we were fortunate in our first couple of years. We had a you – know, we, we got the job, our staff. We had four guys on our roster. And we recruited 11 guys in two and a half months. And we kind of pieced together um, a roster. But the fortunate part of it was one of those four players coming back was – probably a top five player in the country. Um, and so that kind of got us going a little bit. Trevion Cruz, uh, who's now playing, he's probably going to play in the G League for the Fort Wayne Mad Ants uh, this next year. He was in Germany last year. Um, but we've got resources we need. We've got good facilities. It's in a good area. You know, we're three miles from Notre Dame. You know, I feel like we have um, good things to sell for recruits and parents. Um, and so it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Families enjoyed it. The pandemic was hard because when we got here, um, you know, six, seven, eight months, you know, and, and then the pandemic hits and my wife really hadn't quite gotten connected yet. Mm. And so, and we had a one month old when it hit 
And so, you know, that was a hard three or four months because everybody else in the country is posting on social media that they're bored and they're watching movies all day. <laughs> you know, we got a one month old who wouldn't nap. Then, you know, you guys remember our other, you know, six, four and two at the time, Grace mm -hmm. and Ava were still pretty dependent. Mm -hmm. And so it was craziness. Like we were more busy during the pandemic than, than we weren't, but you know, it builds character, makes you tougher, stronger. <laughs> Brittany and I getting through that, I tell her, if we get through this pandemic, we are going to make it as a couple. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we are never getting divorced. Get through oh that. So fortunately we did. Tough times make you strong. Y'all y'all started out pretty good your first year, uh, first year, right? I mean, y'all. Sweet 16, am I wrong? Interesting. Sweet 16 was the, uh, Elite Eight was the second year. Okay. Um, but we, you know, it's crazy. You know, first head coaching, we won 15 games to start the season. Wow. Um, our first game was an overtime game. And, you know, we really didn't know what we had, to be honest with you. We knew we had a decent group, a talent, a pretty talented group. We knew you know, Trevor Cruz, a, a great player. But we just – we didn't know how good. We didn't know our league. And, and so I bet we won four or five pretty close games. and We didn't have the best schedule. So, mm -hmm. um you know, going fifteen and zero was like what in the world? This you is, had to be. Um, were you be, just on cloud nine? I mean, this you can't be what it's like, you know. And then, then we hit the crossroads league. Yeah. Um, and out, you know, kind of how good the league is. You know, we I think at one point, you know, we were fifteen and zero, and I think we were eighteen and three, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then we lose six straight games. So I'm trying to think, like, in the history of the game of basketball at any level. Has there ever been a, a team win 15 games and lose six straight games in the same season? Has that ever happened? Probably I don't not. know. That's, that's hard to do. I haven't done anything. It it, but a part of that was we had four guys during that six-game stretch uh, go down with sickness, injuries. Um, you know, not, not to make excuses, but mm -hmm. we had some guys go down that, that didn't help us, and we played the kind of the toughest part of our conference schedule. but. Um, but yeah, then the pandemic hit. And then the second year we got off to another pretty good start and then faltered towards the end. We lost three of our top six players to injuries. Um, and then, uh, kind of figured it out made a run in the, in the tournament. Um, beat, uh, went out to Omaha, Nebraska in the opening round and beat the number 17 team in the country, then the number 10 team. And then we got rewarded with playing the number one team in the country in Anna Wesleyan in the sweet 16 in our league, which honestly was unfair in my opinion to them, mm -hmm. but they get a number one seed. They've got to play a team from their league, you know, mm -hmm. in the sweet 16. And then we were fortunate to beat them. And then we got rewarded with playing another team in our conference, St. Francis. Um, and then they got us in the lead eight, but it was a fun run. Um, and then this past year we struggled just inconsistency and um, didn't have a good um, mix of guys to kind of figure it out and, and, and put it together. But, but you go through those tough times, and I think we've, I've learned it. I probably learned more this year in our, our year that we struggled than, than the first two years. Yeah. Um, sure. What a uh, – um, so hang on real quick. I'm drawing a complete blank. Um, so, all right, so before – so before, you know, all, the, all the, the assistant spots that you had at Stetson and then Lipscomb, and then I know, you know, you were at places before then, kind of – um, those spots specifically at Stetson and then Lipscomb, kind of how did that prepare, prepare you for, you know, wh where you were at now? What, what, what are some things that happened, some experiences you went through that you were able to, you know, to, to go through and, and be, get where yeah. you're at now? Yeah, just having to deal with guys like you, you know. You and me. <laughs> no, but it, it's interesting. Like Casey, every year, you know, we, Casey and I, we'd go on runs, you know, a couple times a week. And I tried to use that time to kind of pick his brain and, um, you know, kind of at the end of every season, you know, in the spring, I would always, you know, Hey, what are, what are some things that I do well, um, that are strengths of mine? Or what are some things that you think I need to get better at? You know, how can I prepare myself to be a head coach someday? I remember him saying on one of those runs, like great advice, I think for me to give to you, you know, and wanting to be a head coach was every decision that I make, you know, ultimately as a head coach, think about how you would do it what you would do and how you would handle that. And so yeah, the last couple of years at Lipscomb, that's what I, you know, every decision we made as staff, but he ultimately made, I tried to, uh, okay, how would I do that? You know, how, what would my philosophy be? How would, so I kind of started putting some stuff down, you know, coaching philosophy and 
offensively, defensively, you know, core values type stuff. And, um, and then I had a couple of interviews and I, <clears throat> I don't think I did very good with the first couple. Um, yeah. I thought I was prepared, but then when I went through them, I'm like, man, that was not very good. Like I was <laughs> unclear and can go, I, right, can like you, I had can a good going, vision. Can you go a little, yeah. Can you go into a little more detail about that? Yeah, just my clarity, I don't think was very good. Hmm. Um, I, I don't think I had, um, and, and, and again, playing at Belmont for, for Coach Bird and Casey, you know, Kate, coaching with Casey for eight years. But I think a part of it was just needed some practice, you know, with the interview and um, just needed to fine tune it. And, you know, now as I'm into it and now as the head coach and does a lot of the talking with recruits and with your team, and um, I feel like I have a lot more clarity and understanding of who I am as a coach. and what I want with our program and recruiting and whatnot. So, so yeah, those were great experience from for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So kind of po Belmont po post Belmont, post Belmont, uh, yeah. kind of talk to us about those stops and kind of where your head was at, where you wanted to go with this coaching thing. I know you were, you were a grad assistant, um, kind of just what, what, what put you on the road that, uh, that you were on uh, post Belmont? Yeah. I was actually never a grad assistant. Um, you I wanted. Oh, no, you were an assistant at Lenore Ryan, right? Lee's McCray. Lee's McCray. That's yeah. right. And then you went to high school right after that. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's right. So like right, right after, I I wanted to be a GA somewhere else. I could have done it at Belmont if I wanted to. They yeah. had a spot for me, but I wanted to kind of learn from a different program, a different uh, philosophy. And I sent a you know three hundred letters out to schools all over the country, and just nothing panned out. Um, so I, I moved back to Indianapolis where my parents were at, lived at home for a year, saved some money and taught fifth and sixth grade PE for a year, <laughs> which was fun. And I did some basketball training on the side, um, and learned from some kind of trainers in that area. I know you guys have both done a bunch of that, you mm -hmm. know, just training one-on-one -on -one individualized stuff. And, and then from there I went to Swanee and South for one year and then Lisa McCray for two years. And then uh, met Brittany, and she kind of messed up the whole college plan at the time. I thought she was the one, and she ended up being the one. <laughs> Still is the one. And so she was going to go to grad school in uh, University of Indianapolis. And so I thought I was going to try to find something around there, and I found a high school job at Carmel High School, an assistant coaching down there and teaching job. Did that for three years, and then moved on to Stetson and Lipscomb. Mm -hmm. So. So moved around a bunch in that, whatever, eight, nine, ten years. Yeah, yeah. What was that move to Stetson like? Did you know what you were getting into? Was I mean, what, what was that like? Yeah, kind of, you know, playing Division One basketball and being in that same conference, you know, had a, had a decent familiar, familiarity with it. Um, but never having coached at that level, um, you know, it was it was fun. We enjoyed it. You know, Casey and Coach, you know, Roger Eastrom and, and Evans going down to uh, DeLand. Florida. It was good for Brittany and I being a young, I think we were only married for two years to that point. And so us having, you know, being pretty close with our family, it's good for us to just kind of be on our own and figure it out. And right. so we grew up a lot as a couple there for, for those two years. And, you know, we're 30 minutes from, from the beach. And I think we went times in our first four weeks. And then I don't think we went for another year and a half, you know, <laughs> I just think it's always there. Right. But but I learned a lot about, you know, from Casey. Casey's really good at what he does and um, just really good with vision and, and leadership and um, putting a product together that you know, guys that play hard and play together and play smart. Um, and so it was a lot of fun, the recruiting part of it. The recruiting part of it for me at that level was I, I maybe learned the most from just how to do it, phone calls, letters, how to do visits. Mm -hmm. um, I think each year we improved on how we did those things. Mm -hmm. For sure. So when you were going from high school back to college, was that something you were looking to do that you wanted to get back in the college ranks? I definitely wanted to be back in college at some point. I didn't know when um, I had put some feelers out when I was at Carmel those three years um, And Casey and I had, had kept in contact and he knew of my um, aspiration to be back at the college level. And I think when he, he had a couple of jobs that he was up for you know, the years prior to going to Stetson mm -hmm. um, that he had spoke to me about <clears throat> where to get those. 
be a possibility to, to, to be on his staff. But yeah, when he took that, um, yeah, I jumped at it and was excited about it. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what was the hardest part about the, sorry, what was the hardest part about that division one move? Just not having been at like, I guess what I'm trying to say is not having coached at the division one level, um, going to high school for three years and then going back. Yeah. Maybe first thing that's come to mind, just being away. Um, mm-hmm. so far away, I guess. It's funny how, no matter how old you get, that's still a thing. I mean, that, like, that's, that's no going to be a thing. There's, there's no doubt. And for, for Brittany and I, it was good because we didn't have any kids yet. Mm-hmm. So like when I went on trips, like she was cool with that because she got her separation from me and her independence. <laughs> <laughs> and now when I go on pretty trips, she's mad at me because she's got to deal with the kids all by herself. So. <laughs> Just a different That's way. why you're up near your family again. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I just, maybe all that goes into it, you know, the, the division one level, just everything that goes into it from, you know, recruiting to player development, to summers, to academics. Um, there's just, there's so much to it. You could spend 24 hours a day in the office mm-hmm. and have plenty to do, or sure. you could spend four hours a day, you know, and yeah. do the best. You can. But there's just, there's just so, um, you know, alumni, former players, um, you know, fundraising, you mm-hmm. know, connecting with people in the community, mm-hmm. you know, just maybe all that goes into it and just all the responsibilities that you have. But feel good about the guys we brought in. Uh, the kind of the biggest get we, um, of players we got, uh, Drew Lutz, um, transfer from Incarnate Word. Um, he was originally committed to Bethel, um, but when the coaching change happened, he reopened it. I spoke with him and his parents, but he ended up going to Incarnate Word. Um, but he's from Penn High School, which is 10 minutes away. And Granger, oh, wow. Indiana, 10 minutes away. So that'll be good just to have a local, local kid, you know, a lot of family, a lot of – there's a, a big local um, following of him and his family, the good people. Oh, great. So I think that'll help with – And will he take two years? Or will he – two years. Yeah, he, pl- he played three, but he'll take his COVID year and play two. He'll get – a. Wow. He'll finish his undergrad in the fall, and then he'll start a grad program in the in the spring. So he'll, and then he'll get that after you know for about a year and a half. So then we've got three other, three or four other guys. Al Petulus from your neck of the woods, Nate. He's from London, but played at school in Chattanooga. There, um, uh, where do you play, Macaulay? At uh, Baylor. Baylor. Yeah, okay. for, uh, for Mark Price. Oh, I was about to say yeah for Mark Price. So he's he's been really good this summer. Really, I'm really excited about him. Six seven freshman. Kind of three, four. Yeah. And then I got a shooter from UNC Asheville. It was a walk on there, Deacon Heath. Um, Jordan Okanji, another kid. He's from London, England as well. Um, but oh, he played wow. junior college ball in Texas. Um, and then we got a guy from uh, – played at IMG. He moved to uh, Utah, Hawaii. Then now he's at Veritas Prep School in uh, Los Angeles named Chikara Tanaka, a uh, 6'2 wow. wing player. Don't you forget their names. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many, how many, ju- do you, how, how hard are you, do you recruit JUCOs? Is it just depending on, you know, if you see a kid you like, or are you, uh, you know, what, what's your philosophy on that? Not, not a ton. With us parting ways with guys. Um, in our first year when we got here, we had to recruit so many guys. Mm-hmm. We looked at more junior college guys, but, um, philosophically we've not looked at a ton just because of how we play yep just the style um junior college guys don't typically play mm-hmm. uh, play the style that we we play as you guys are familiar with um but the five man we got from jordan okanji he's a five man and, and those are the kind of the guys that will recruit more from the junior college level five men um just with the nature of the position and how we play yeah yeah uh, yeah That's typically true. we in, in a Traditional year, we want to recruit three or four high school, one or two transfer, just with the okay. landscape of it. But it's so different now with the portal. Right. How, how what, what are you, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that and how you, how are you navigating that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, like right now, there's so many more players still available right now than ever, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. I, the last three or four weeks, I've been pretty nervous. Like we're still recruiting, you know, 
how many good players can possibly still be out there, but they're, they're out there. Um, mm-hmm. Just, you know, I've talked to Nate a few times and just trying to talk with, you know, coaching contacts, junior college contacts, overseas contacts of, you know, what players do you are still available? Um, so we're still in need of one more. We're still looking for a, another, um, just to solidify the roster, but um, it, it's one of those things where, you know, Brian Ayers at Belmont, I was talking to him this year. He said Belmont, it, you know, it, it, the mid-major level at the division one, almost like college situation, you know, with the, with the portal now. And, you know, at our level, you know, if there's kids that maybe aren't getting the division one looks, Hey, come to Bethel for, for a year or two, See how you're like. you know, and if you, if your stock rises, you know, we'll help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you have more of that going on than, than ever before. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah, love our guys. Almost turns it into a, a yeah. juvenile opportunity. Really? You could say. Yeah. I'd rather have guys stay here for four years. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, but it's a part of it now. You gotta, gotta navigate that. Our goal is to create such an environment and uh, an experience that they don't want to leave. That's mm-hmm. our hope. Yeah. Build those relationships. Yep. For yeah. Sure. Um, all right, coach. I want so let's let's talk about the free throws. Let's talk about the free throws. What I, I was I was I looked up some of your stats too before we before we got on. What you, I couldn't tell you. Hold up, before you even go, I couldn't tell you how many times throughout my career I just looked at Coach Draven's stats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got them pulled up right here. I have them pulled up right here. Like, I know? made it. A, I made it a like I was trying so hard and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't <laughs> do the free throw thing until I shot only thirty my senior year. In which case. I by default I did do it. Could have done it, Coach. Do, do, you know, do you know what you shot from the line for your career? Was it ninety two nine? I think. I'm seeing ninety one seven. Ninety one seven. Okay. I'm seeing ninety one seven. You know your yeah, lowest. Coach, not that good. Yeah. I think that was high school. <laughs> it was high school. Ninety two nine. Oh my goodness. Golly, what do you know? What you shot from three for your career? I do not. What do you think it is? Forty. 41.3, 41.3, point three, forty one point, and that was that was I mean, great. Golly. Well, that's for, great. you get that forty threshold. That's that's pretty dang good. Jesse yeah, Snyder on our t- better, I think, for his career. He he shot what? He shot better. You think so he shot? Yeah. Not he, uh, Did he shoot more than you? I don't know. I know his senior year he had to shoot a lot more. And you, Jesse Snyder was good, man. I remember. Oh my yeah. gosh, Jesse Snyder. I remember watching. And so Nick Otis was on your team too, right? He was. Was yeah. he on that team? God, y'all. Yeah. There were so many shooters on that team. What? Okay, we, we couldn't guard anybody, but we, <laughs> <laughs> we could shoot it. <laughs> oh man, those are some great. And then, uh, so, and you were with Penny for two years, yeah. Yep. yep. Love playing with Penny. Yeah. Did you? We had a tough first semester. Penny yeah. and I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then our, we figured it out. Him and I, we just figured it out. We went to dinner one night. Had a great conversation. I mean, it wasn't the easiest conversation, but yeah. we kind of went at it a little bit, and we kind of came to an understanding, and we had an awesome last year and a half. That's, that's cool. I, 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 he was one of my favorite teammates. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, okay, so how many – back to the free throw thing. How, what's the most – we know that – what's the most – I don't remember the exact number. How many free throws have you made in a row? What's the number? Oh, uh, 364. I feel like it's four. 54, 54, 54. You got it, Nate. You remember that. 354. 354? Oh. 354. Golly. 354. In, high, in high school, I every practice. I listened more than you thought I did, Coach Draven. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. So in practice in high school, we would, shoot, we would do a drill, and then after that first drill, we, everybody would shoot 25 free throws. And if you made 25, you kept shooting. So we had opportunities every day to, to, to do it. We had a lot of guys make over 100. How, how long did it take you to make 354 in a row? I remember taking like 30, 35 minutes. Really? Wow. So I remember, yeah. Well, he's a one dribble and shoot guy. He is. He is. Quick. Shot it pretty quick. What's your, what was your, I, and, and Nate, I'm not good. What was your free throw tips? What's your free throw? You always did it at camp you, uh, every single time. <laughs> what's your, give us your free throw tips for the people. We need a video, a running video of him giving the tips while just sinking free throws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing the form shooting. He's just sitting yeah, here yeah, talking yeah. like it's nothing, just, you know, one after another. Swish, now, swish, swish. swish. There was a guy, when I was in middle school, a guy did that. Like, he would shoot free throws. He would shoot 200 free throws during his talk. And if he didn't make 195, he, would, he wouldn't take money for, for, t- for speaking. Wow. He had to make 195 to be paid. Wow. So, Wow, what a business model. 195 for 200. You have not told me that story. That's cool. About every time. 
That's unbelievable. So he would do it while he was talking, and I thought, man, that's pretty cool to be able to do that. So a lot of practice. I've done it the last, whatever, 15 years. They got, My they dad got, was really good at it, too. They got yeah. some in that water in Indiana with the they, – they, I don't know, some elbow grease, some wrist grease that they don't have <laughs> down here in the south. Well, I mean, we got a lot of – a lot of unathletic, you know, <laughs> guys up here that, that can't do a whole lot. Hey, uh, something that a lot of people don't know is that one of the best things that Coach Draven is, is he's just, you know, you, you know how to, like, deceive on the basketball court. But what he's really good at is deceiving on the ultimate Frisbee. I was, there we go. Yes. There we go. Because I, I only think I got to play for, like, two years because I got hurt every other year. But yeah. – I remember I used to try to guard Coach Draven, and I was like, God, he's the worst. <laughs> he moved every time. He he was the he was the constant one that just. I mean, he was Steph Curry on the on the ultimate on the ultimate frisbee field. He was just constantly moving, coming off screens, coming off you know everything. Was, the screens. Yeah, and he, part of my game. I had I had to keep moving. <laughs> if I was if I did anything one on one, I I couldn't break anybody down or yeah or get a shot off. I had to I had to move. Hey, there's a reason that I've always related a lot to you, Coach Draven. That, yeah, <laughs> hey, back to the Indiana and un 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 unathletic, unathletic thing. This is a sidebar real quick, and it's about Chad Lang is the only reason I'm saying it. Chad Lang once said, he was like, can you imagine if you had a baby in Atlanta and then you moved him to Indiana when he was like 12, how good of a basketball player that would be? <laughs> he said he'd be super athletic, and then he'd be able to, you know, learn how to shoot. And That's so true. That's so true. Oh, shout out to Chad Lang, man. Worst teammate yeah. ever. I'm keeping that in there. I'll, I'll say that to his face. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Chad was always good to me. Great guy, but just bad basketball teammate is all I'm saying. Um, just keep going. <laughs> um, I, I coach, I, Nate, I don't, I don't have much more. You want to do some, uh, you want to, Oh, Hey, oh. before we go. Um, so this is cool. Coach Draven. I, I, I don't know if I ever showed you this, but coach Draven, I, I want to say it was my sophomore year. Gave me a note. Did I ever tell you that I still had that note? I don't think so. Now, I got oh, washed, so the lines on the thing are – Oh, yeah. been in my wallet for, That's I guess, now. One. Junior, senior, senior. Eight you know years now? You know who you know that is? Do you know what it says? Yeah, great leaders set a tone of intolerance for anything that gets in the way of winning. Mm. Yep. Mm. It was team leaders, team but leaders. yes – Mm, that, was, that was that was impressive. That say I that, we, just read it off the sheet, but it's not, it's not my quote. Say that one more time, coach. Uh, team leaders set a tone of intolerance for anything that gets in the way of winning. It's mm. going right back in. Yeah, that's a good one. You know who said that? I got that from uh, Steve Draven. The Jeff Van Gundy. Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah, really. You got some good ones. Well, I have used that. To about every single one, or every time I have a player and I tell them something, I like if I give them a note card because I do that now too. Um, I would tell them about yours and I would show them that I still have mine. That's that cool. is that's great. That that that's good. That's really. So good. whenever I get, it's actually funny. So whenever I lose my wallet, which you both probably know that happens a lot, I lose. <laughs> Doesn't um, really. Yes, but somehow I've still kept this wallet. And this what about wallet, your keys? What about your keys? They'll have those too. I mean, I'm, I'm on a roll, but I mean, I will lose them. It's just when will I find them? Mm -hmm. But that is the only thing that I, I don't worry about. Like if I lose money, I lose money. If I lose a debit card, I can cancel it. But, you know, like that type of stuff. But that is the one thing I don't want to lose. <laughs> That's awesome. Appreciate that, man. All right, Coach. Yeah, hey, you want to do uh, some rapid fire questions with us to wrap up? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Um, first one, uh, last technical. Uh, St. Francis last year at St. Francis. What, what'd you do? <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised to hear him say he got one. <laughs> Coach Draven. I've had two in three years. I've had two. And I almost okay. got thrown out of the game. R tell us. Oh, gosh, I want to see the video. The situation <laughs> was we gave up three offensive rebounds in a, in a same possession. And – the kid who gets the third offensive rebound in a row takes like five steps. And, you know, I'm screaming travel, you know, travel. Come on, Nick, travel. It's Nick, you know, Nick Terry, I don't know if I'm – can I say that on the – Yeah, you can say that. If not, we can take it out. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, he, he comes over to me and – well, um, yeah, I get the technical. And then, you know, for yelling or, or whatever – I think I pumped my fist. I did the Casey Alexander pump fist, you know, pumping my fist. <laughs> so that, that got it for me. And then I, and then he came over and said, um, 
you know, why don't you teach your guys how to box out? And made me so mad. (laughs) You know, call to travel. Uh You know, I don't care. You know, two, two, watching the film, two of the ones were just tough bounces like it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he kind of put his hand up to his whistle like he's going to throw me out. And he, he pulled it back. But, but yeah, St. Francis last year. Wait, so what did you say after he said that? I don't remember. Oh, I've never, never cussed to an official. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But I just, oh my gosh, that send me the funny. video. I want to see how hot you were. You were heated. Like heated. Yeah. Not like, I mean, obviously you're good looking, but that's not what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right. So to answer the next question, never been kicked out of a game, correct? Yeah, no, close. That was yeah. closest. Even as a player? As a player, no. No. Got gotcha. you. Um, all right. Ever dunked a basketball on a 10 foot rim? Nope. No? One try. I tried one time. You're that only one try. I promise. Said you were done. It was our inter squad scrimmage my senior year. Like they have like a three point contest and a dunk contest. Yeah. And one of my teammates threw it up right above the rim. And I was, I, I, my hand was above the rim, but I couldn't palm it. And yeah. I lost the grip, hit the back of the rim, and went out. So I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I may have tried a few times before that, but I, I know I'd never tried after. I'm yeah, like, yeah. That is, I'm that good. Is, that's funny. Um, all right. You're up three at the, at the end of a the game. They had the last shot. Wow. You're, you're foul. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. That's perfect. Um, you leave Under seven remote. seconds. Under seven seconds. Seven. That's, that's right, the Casey okay. Alexander rule right that's there. That's the rule, right? It is. It is for me. It, it, oh, is that not the Casey rule? I told him to do that. What did he say? He'll, he'll, he'll say it's his idea, but I've forced him to do that. <laughs> where did that come where, where did that come from? Did, because I, I promise you, my first two years coaching, so when I taught fifth and sixth grade PE, I, I – So, hang on, we got, the foul, we got the foul king here himself. We got the, where it all started from. This is – all right. Well, I, 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 I didn't – it wasn't my idea. Yeah, yeah. But I, it was my idea for Casey to do. Mm. Um, but I, I bet my first two years – I coached with my dad. My dad coached girls basketball at, uh, in Indianapolis. Um, and I coached my sister, one of my sisters, that season. I was one of his assistants. And I bet that season, I bet four or five times, we're up three late in the game, and other team hits a three, you know, less than seven seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it, my second year when I was at Swanee, it happened a few times. And I'm just like, I'm sold on it. If, you're, yeah. if it's seven seconds or less, I am 100% following. Yeah. And we actually had that situation in the national tournament two years ago. Um, I think there was five seconds. And we're up three, and it was a side out of bounds. And I didn't think about this, but they threw it in to, like, 15-foot area on, on the baseline, and we fouled right away. And so my question to you guys was, so there's five seconds left. Okay. Guy throws it to 15 feet. Obviously, you know, it doesn't matter if he shoots from there. Mm-hmm. Um, but we fouled him. Do you foul him if they catch it inside the three? Wait, below the free throw line or inside? He caught it like at 15 feet on the baseline. So he gets he gets it underneath. Yeah. Oh gosh, no. That's a good question. So I would really hope that my guy does not allow him to catch it. I think you foul him. We were so he went to the free throw line. Oh, oh one and one, but but they were trying to set you know hit him and then have somebody else come off the screen. Yeah, no foul yeah. foul him. That's for what sure. I'm saying. I think yeah. I think you do foul him. Yeah, I think you, that's a good that's a great question, coach. That's a great question. I think you got to foul that person. Um, all right. Uh, you leaving your best player in with two fouls in the first half or no? Yes. Yep. Well, it depends. Most of the time, yes. If he's yep. a point guard, he's smart. Like Drew Lutz this year, yes. Trevion Cruz, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's somebody. Ace Duval, no. Ace to Duval, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Moran, no. Nate, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I'm not going to foul anybody. If you got a guard to foul would have I told you, man. They would have I told you. <laughs> yeah, no, no uh, kidding. I've been doing this whole thing. No. Oh, Help. Just like um, they would have me. So, speaking <laughs> to myself. Yeah. That's what Sanford did to me during all the scrimmages. Hated playing Sanford in those scrimmages. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, you go for the tie or go for the win? Win. Win? Good. Uh, casual or professional on the sidelines? Casual. Casual? Good. Uh, before the pandemic, I would have said professional. Yeah. Do you do you bring out the suits at all now? Weddings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. I like I like that answer. 
Um, all right, early morning or evening or night practice? Early morning. Early morning. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. If you were not coaching basketball, what would you be doing? Great question. Playing. Yeah, playing. Can I say playing? Even no, I'm not good enough. I'm not. Good. I'm not. I'm not like. No, you're not skating by with that one. Teacher. Teacher. Yeah. I like that. That works. Um, all right. You playing any golf lately? I played two weeks ago on vacation down in yeah. uh, Florida. What'd you shoot? Very poor. Very poor. I uh, shot a 99 with 12 mulligans. <laughs> that's like you broke 100. You're on vacation. That's, that's the truth. So it was, it was 111. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> Thank Maybe you for that. One was a 108 with like oh. four, four mulligans. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Um, all right. Uh, should every team make the conference tournament? <clears throat> Depends. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Depends on what. That's fine. Yes. Just the conference makeup, how many teams you have, all that stuff. I mean, so, like, like SEC, like, you like 16 or 14 or 12, like, I'm good with not everybody getting in. If you got but if, if you have eight, definitely. If you have 10, yeah. Yeah. I say yeah. Okay. 10 or less, yeah. More than 10, no. So, are you against the SEC tournament format then? Yes. Really? I'd agree with that. Yeah. You're against it, Nate? Yeah, I don't think that 14 teams – I'm not saying that – I think there should be, like, four teams that don't make it. There should be 10 teams. Like I mean, if you're, think- if you're in the bottom four of the SEC, I don't think you deserve a shot to go to the NCAA tournament by just getting hot for, for, for two days, three days. I just don't think those guys have any chance of, of winning the conference tournament. I don't right. Know. right. If you're 11, 12, 13, or 14, there's no. Yeah. you're not winning the SEC tournament. Yeah, that's not happening. Unless you have Marshall Henderson on your team. <laughs> you can win a game or two. That's true. Yeah. No, uh, but I agree. All right, Coach. Last one. LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. All right, but let's, do, you, a, let's do a real one. You, Asa. Let's do a real one for, uh, for the sake of this podcast. Um, Jordan or Bird? I mean, Jordan. But I love Bird. <laughs> <laughs> As a bad pain in to say that one. Uh, I guess you 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 South Bend's not that's not far from uh, Chicago, right? You where you where you grew up in Indiana is not far from Chicago, right? Yeah. So Laporte, we were about hour twenty. Here we're about an hour fifty. Gotcha. Gotcha. I right, I'll see you now. Um, we actually took our team to Chicago uh, last Saturday. Really? So we cool. took uh, took the train, South Shore train. We went over to the airport, South Bend. And, it was about a two-hour train ride. That's cool. That's what were you guys cool. doing over there? It was neat. Just went, went, and uh, we gave money to eat, and they had five, six hours on their own. Cool. Well, some went to the awesome. beach. Some went to uh, Michigan Avenue. We're gonna have a lot of, like, they have the Nike store. Yeah. Um, just a bunch of shops, restaurants. It was good. It was fun. Weather was perfect. That's pretty cool for the summer. I mean, that's that's for for a little, you know, a little per diem thing during the summer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right, Coach, man, uh, I think that's all we got for you today. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Where can people find you on uh, social media? I don't know. Twitter, I don't know what it is. I can <laughs> tell you what my Twitter handle is. I think it's S. Draven, but my dad's got one too. I don't know. S. Draven. S. Draven. S. Draven. Mm-hmm. Could be my dad's. No, it's yours. Okay, good. I'm on Instagram too. Be careful. Awesome. Right my fam. 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 Um, all right, cool. Well, you can look up Coach Draven. You can find uh, myself on Instagram at the, at the Aces page with a Z on the end. That's for Casey. He called me earlier this week. I haven't called him back, and he said he was looking for the Aces page with a Z on the end. So I got I got to keep it going. Shout out to Casey. I'm sorry I haven't called you back, man. Not for calling you soon. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Coach Aces page. You can find Nathan on Instagram and Twitter at uh, Coach Nathan Moran. You can find Mind of a Coach on um, Twitter at Mind of a Coach Pod, and you can find us on Instagram at Mind of a Coach. Uh, Coach Draven, man, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. That, you've done that a few times. That a, last few time. time. a few yeah. times. A few times. Hey, tell, tell both of your parents I said hi. I love both of your parents. We will. We'll we will. Awesome people. We'll let them know. I think, that, I think they're pretty avid listeners of the show, so they may hear you say it. Good deal. Yeah. Well, at least Ace's parents are. But... <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Coach, thank you again. Thank you, yeah, Coach. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate you. Hey, all the best to you guys. Go for it.